Are you planning a through hike of the Appalachian Trail? If so, I have seven things that you need to know before you start your through hike. By the way, before I get into these things, I just want to note that I have a bunch of other videos about through hiking the Appalachian Trail. If you're interested, go check those out. I'll put a link to the playlist down in the show notes. And I also have lots of other hiking, backpacking, and outdoor content. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're interested in those things. I'm definitely hoping to do more long trails in the future. And this past summer, I actually through hiked the Foothills Trail in North and South Carolina and the Colorado Trail in Colorado, beautiful Colorado. So if you're interested in those long trails as well, definitely check out more on my channel. My first tip is if you are going at the normal time frame, which is between mid-March and mid-April, and you're going northbound, which means you're starting in Georgia, planning to finish in Maine, something that you need to know is that it's probably going to be pretty freaking cold in Georgia when you start. I was overwhelmed at how cold it was for the first few weeks that I was on trail, and I was sleeping in all of my clothes for several weeks. So I would highly recommend that you bring a puffy jacket, like an insulated jacket, bring a sleeping bag that's rated down to at least 20 degrees. I had a zero degree bag and I was still cold and I still had to buy a sleeping bag liner on top of that. Definitely bring a lot of layers, consider a beanie. And the reason is like you're in the mountains in Georgia, you're up at higher elevation. The weather often is not the best. It's often socked in by cold fog. It might be sunny and beautiful down in the towns in Georgia. And then you're up on the trail and you're, <laughs> you're surrounded by fog and you're freezing cold. So just be aware that it's probably going to be pretty cold when you start the trail. Tip number two, this may be obvious to some of you and not to others. It rains a heck of a lot on the AT. <laughs> So be prepared mentally and with your gear for a lot of rain. I recommend bringing a raincoat and rain pants. And when it's when you're going through like Georgia and North Carolina and the weather is still pretty cold, like the air temperature is still pretty cold, you might get some really, really cold rain and it could last all day long. So I often wore my entire rain suit like all day long. <laughs> I would also recommend bringing an extra pair of clothes just for camp. So I would hike in the same clothes all day, every day. But then as soon as I got to camp, I would immediately set up my tent and I would change my clothes to get out of my wet stuff. Because if it's cold outside and you're wet, you're going to cool down and get cold really, really fast once you stop hiking. So in order to make you more comfortable, boost morale, and help to prevent hypothermia, have an extra set of clothes for a camp that's dry, that's going to be warm, that you can put on when you get to camp so that you don't get too freezing cold once you stop hiking for the day. Tip number three, you need a permit to hike through the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This permit is good for up to eight days, so you can spend up to eight days going through the section that goes through the Great Smoky Mountains. The permit costs $20 and you can get it on the Great Smoky Mountains National Park website. You need to actually print out the permit in advance. So make sure you are planning accordingly. I know that the closest town that you can probably print it out going northbound is Franklin, North Carolina. So make sure you are getting your stuff together in Franklin, North Carolina, buying your permit and printing it out while you're there. I believe it's good for up to 30 days past the time that you print it out. But then when you actually get to the Smokies right past Fontan Fontana Dam, you put half of your permit into a permit box, you date it, you sign it. And so from that point, you have eight days to get through the Great Smoky Mountains. I can't remember off the top of my head which town is the closest going southbound. Possibly Hot Springs is my guess. So just make sure as you're approaching the Great Smoky Mountains, going that direction as well, you're just thinking to yourself, I need to remember to actually print out my permit. I know when I went through, there was no printing option in Fontana Dam, so definitely don't leave it to the last minute. Tip number four, cell phone service is pretty darn spotty on the AT as it is in many wilderness areas. I had Verizon while I was on the AT and I often had cell phone service like almost every day usually at the tops of mountains, the tops of climbs. Often I did not have cell phone service down in the valleys, especially where I would get to road crossings. My friend Ibex had AT&T 
and her service was much more spotty than mine. Another guy we hiked with had T-Mobile and he pretty much never had cell phone service. My spottiest cell phone service was definitely up in Maine, especially in the 100 mile wilderness. So if you are a person who feels like you need to be able to communicate with the outside world, I would definitely recommend bringing some kind of satellite communication device along with you. I have a Garmin InReach Mini. I did not have it while I was on the AT, but I do have it now and I often use it on backpacking trips. And I really like it because even when I don't have cell phone service, it gives me a line to the outside world. I can use it to text people. I can use it to check the weather. It has an SOS button that'll get me in touch with search and rescue if, uh, if something should happen. The only thing about my inReach, and I think this is probably the same for any GPS like satellite communication device, is that when it's very cloudy, it won't work. And the AT is often cloudy. <laughs> it rains a lot there. Weather's not great. So even that, you can't rely on that to work every single day, but it will give you an additional way to connect with people a lot of the time when you don't have cell phone service. And I'll put some information about the InReach Mini down in the show notes. There are other brands and other models, but that's just the one that I have. I really like it, so that's the one I'm familiar with. Tip number five, Trail Wisdom says that if, again, you are hiking northbound during the normal time frame, starting between mid-March and mid-April, you can get rid of your cold weather clothes and maybe your cold weather sleeping bag when you get to Damascus, Virginia. I would say wait until you get through the Grayson Highlands. The Grayson Highlands are north of Damascus. You get to Damascus somewhere around mile like 470 and you hit the Grayson Highlands around mile 500. So it's not too far, just probably a couple days journey depending on how fast you're going. But it can be pretty cold up in the Highlands because as the name suggests, they are at higher elevation. And so even in the spring, even in May, it can be pretty chilly up there. So I would just recommend waiting until you get through the Grayson Highlands to actually switch out your colder weather gear for your summer gear. Tip number six, speaking of the Grayson Highlands, the Grayson Highlands are a magical fairy land of a place. They are around mile 500 going northbound in Southern Virginia. And in the Grayson Highlands, there are wild ponies roaming about among the beautiful landscape. It is absolutely magical and I flipping loved the Grayson Highlands. But no matter how cute these ponies are, no, they are wild animals <laughs> and they are very naughty and they like to steal hikers gear because I think they like to lick the salt off of it. So do not trust the ponies with your gear. Make sure you are not leaving your gear unattended. Things like shoes, trekking poles, socks, things like that. Keep all that gear under wraps and do not leave it out and about or it might disappear off with a pony. Tip number seven, you're probably going to need some cash along the way at some point, whether it's to pay for a hostel out in the middle of nowhere, stop at a roadside store that only takes cash, pay a shuttle driver, things along those lines. So I would recommend bringing a little bit of cash along with you on the trail. I would say maybe $100 in different size bills. And then as you spend that cash, you can replenish it, obviously, but you don't want to end up out in the middle of nowhere in a really remote area with the chance to buy an ice cold soda or a bag of Doritos and you can't because you don't have any cash. So plan accordingly. All right, you guys, those are my seven tips for today. I have so many more tips. As I mentioned, I have a whole big playlist of videos dedicated to the Appalachian Trail. It, the AT, it still has my heart even after I've been off of it for a few years and I just, I love it so much and I love to share my enthusiasm and my knowledge. So if you are interested in hiking the AT and you're looking for some advice, make sure you check out my AT playlist. Thank you so much for being here and I will talk to you later.